My name is Caitlin and welcome to my first floss tube. I'm so excited to be here with you uh, and show you all of my cross stitching projects. Um, I do have some notes in front of me because I'm super nervous. <laughs> this feels very strange. Um, hopefully I'll get more comfortable. But yeah, my name is Caitlin. Uh, did I already say I'm Cross Stitch Kate? Um, here on FlossTube and then over on Instagram. I'll put my uh, handle for Instagram uh, down below. And welcome. I'm just like, I don't know what to say. I have notes, I have all my whips. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, we're about to get a pretty big snowstorm tomorrow. They're predicting 10 inches. So I'm just basking in the, you know, clear streets for today. Um, but yeah, I live in Minneapolis. I live with uh, my five-year-old dog, Birdie. She is a sweetheart. You might hear her barking occasionally on these videos, um, but she's sleeping right now. So hopefully she'll be quiet. So me and Birdie, we live in Minneapolis. I am a school social worker at an elementary school for my day job. Uh, if anyone uh, is in education that's watching, you know that it has been an interesting past couple of years. Uh, so cross-stitching is definitely something that I need to do at the end of the day to help de-stress from all, all the things that happen during the day. Um, I do love my job. I love, I love the little kids that I help. Uh, I work at a K-5 elementary school. So um, lots of fun teaching social skills to the little humans. So um, what else, what else about me? Uh, some of my other hobbies, reading. Um, I'm not really, super crafty in any other areas of my life except for cross stitch um so i don't do any other amazing you know like knitting or crocheting or any other fiber arts um that i see a lot of people do i would love to learn one day but right now just cross stitch for me so um i i did learn how to cross stitch as a child my grandmother taught me that's my that's my grandma right there um in in that photo and yeah, she taught me a lot of different things, but cross stitching was one that, you know, I did a few kits and projects uh, during high school, uh, middle school age, but then kind of just lost track of that. And so once the pandemic hit, I think like a lot of people, I needed something to do. <laughs> I needed a little, a little something. Um, other, I got sick of doing puzzles and watching TV. So, um, I ended up ordering a kit on Amazon um, and I remember it was advertised as a weekend project and it ended up taking me like four months to do. Um, yeah, it was, but it, it got me into everything and I started like Googling how to do certain things. Um, I had a lot of questions about the fabric and like how many strands of threads to use. And then I found floss tube and it was amazing and I was so excited. Um, since starting, I have, I have created quite a collection of supplies, uh, fabrics, flosses, just all, all the patterns. And it's just kind of, I've gone down a rabbit hole, but it's been so fun. And I've been watching floss tube since 2020 and I had thought about making a video in the past, but just never have done it. So I thought, you know, 2023 let's do something new. So um, today I'm just going to go through all of my different projects. I have 20 whips. Um, some of them are just the smallest of small starts. So I'm really hoping for the new year that I get a lot of progress on my whips. And uh, whips, for those of you who don't know, if my family and friends are watching, God, I hope you're not. Um, um, so I'm going to go through my, my whips. I've got 20, like I said, and I will do my best to tell you about the fabric and um, I'll tell you when I started stitching. So let's get into it. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, I did iron a few of them, but some of them just weren't even worth it because they're so small. 
Um, so my first whip is, let me get the picture out, is Plum Street Samplers Blackberry House. It is so beautiful. I first saw this pattern on Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch um, on her floss tube and loved watching her progress and I had to get started pretty quick after I saw this. Um, I just love the colors. This finishing is amazing. I wish I had a little blue box like this. Um, so this is my oldest whip. I started this November of 2020 and I am almost done. Like probably a day or two worth of uh, worth of time. We'll get this one finished. It's kind of big. Look at my cute little ballerina needle minder. I'll show you that. I believe I got that from Abby Topknot um, on her shop. But yeah, this is my Blackberry house. So you can see, this is weird that I can't see you guys. Um, you can see all I have left to do is fill in that big urn. Um, so it's that light blue color that it will be filled in, but that's just good background stitching. Um, so I, I anticipate, and I'm, I wanted to have this done in December, but I didn't, but I anticipate that I will have this done very shortly within the week. So I love it. I did change the pattern a bit. Um, there is supposed to be an alphabet on the bottom, but I, I'm not a big alphabet stitcher. Um, so I just kind of ended it. I'll show you. I just ended it where the little blackberries are. And I think it looks great. So look at those colors. Colors are showing up pretty true. So it's on a light 40 count light mocha uh, Edinburgh linen. And I just love it. So that will be a, a finish for 2023 very, very shortly. So that is Blackberry House. All right, number two. My second whip is, um, let me get out the pattern, Carolyn Manning. Um, what is it called? What is this called? Oh, oh my gosh, sea glass. It is written right there. Um, this is sea glass. I love those greens, turquoises, and so pretty. Um, when I kitted this up, I just, I had so much fun with all of the different, it's just in DMC, uh, not just, it's in DMC and it, DMC is great. Um, I use it all the time, but I, this is one of my focus projects for, um, oh, my needle minder just fell off and we'll get that later. This is one of my focus projects for January. So here's my progress. It's kind of blowing out a little bit. Let me see if I can put something behind it. Um, so I've got kind of, this is the corner, the bottom left corner. And then I started in the middle. I think that's the middle up here. So yeah, that one is so pretty. I love that one. Whip number three is Winter Rose Manor. I know lots of people are stitching this. And of course my booklet is Let's see, Winter Rose Manor from With Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. Oh, it's so pretty. There it is, look at that cardinal, both those cardinals. I love this piece, I love the house. Um, so I have a pretty pathetic start on this one. Um, for this being a birthday start, I just, I didn't get very far. <laughs> um, this is on, let's see, I believe it is, the corner, the bottom right corner. Um, so there's my start fabric. It's a little more pinky, like mauve, mauve color. Um, the fabric is 38 count early America from, from Barbaral Creations. Got this on Etsy. Um, it's so soft and it's great linen. Um, I have a really big piece. I don't think I'm going to need this big of a piece. I think it's a, it must be a fat quarter, um, but it seems big, <laughs> I don't know. So, so pretty. I am absolutely going to be working on this more. I think this is my February focus piece. I'll do another video where I talk about all of my plans um, 
so I'm doing I'm not doing whip go I did whip go last year and it didn't go great for me so I am trying to assign things to months in advance so that I am prepared so um okay number four is and heaven and nature sings by Kathy Barrick I didn't take this out of the plastic um it's so pretty I love this one look at that deer so cute the berry bowl and yeah it's a good one so sorry for the glare when heaven and or and heaven and nature sing by Kathy Barrick I have a pretty small start on this one too. Um, this is 36 count Tycho Edinburgh from Picture This Plus. So I have kind of like the top of the deer's back right here and then little bird feet on top and his, I don't know, collar, yoke, whatever is, whatever is around his neck. So that is such a cute one. Such a good winter holiday stitch. So. I'll get back to that. I'm doing that with the called for threads. I haven't been talking about threads, but everything is really called for usually. Um, I'm, I'm not super confident at like conversions at this point. So even though I have so much, so many threads that I, I should learn how to do that. All right. Number five is Satsuma Street. The autumn version, I think it's Atonio, Atono. I don't know how you pronounce it, but Satsuma Street. Um, this is a uh, one of four season seasonal pieces um, of this design. I have done the summer one, um, and Satsuma Street Jody Rice just does like the colors are so vibrant and so pretty. Um, so that is what I am starting. I have a pitiful start on this. I've got, this is the center, it's the leaf in the middle. It's just like the outline of, I don't even know what this is. It's so small. Um, last year I did the 12 by 12 um, New Year's New Starts, uh, is that what it's called, 12 by 12, um, that Kia B and Pam from Just Keep Stitching hosted. Um, so I did that last year and I did 12 new starts. And so the majority of my new starts are I haven't worked on them since since last year um yeah but i am hoping to get a lot of progress on them all this year because i love them all i just i just have not i've been focusing on other things i have finished a lot of other things you'll see that in a different video so um let's see that was stitched on oh my gosh i didn't even show you the fabric i have to go back because it's color and cotton and the color is harvest moon I'm not sure if it's like a golden beige it's so pretty i love color and cotton it's my favorite fabric to stitch on it's just like super soft and like has just a good weight to it um so yeah and i believe it's 32 counts Yes, I don't love stitching on 32 count anymore. If I had a choice um, to go back and restart some of the projects um, on a higher count, I would. I I don't like how my stitches look with two strands. So, um, in in the future, you will you will be seeing higher counts. This is number six. Ink circles, bloomers. I love ink circles. Uh, I think this is my fourth project that I'm working on from, from ink circles. And this one is so pretty. The pinks and the golds. Uh, I think there's like lavender in there. I don't know if you can see that. So this again, I have the smallest of small. This isn't even worth showing, but look at that. <laughs> this is probably the top corner. I'm trying to, it's a pinky um a pinky fabric let's see sprite lugana from picture this plus maybe i can open it up a little bit um it looks white on the camera but it's pink it's so pretty but you can see the pink thread i think i started i did a center start so yeah this is also 32 count so Oy. I mean, that might even be worth just taking out and starting over. Who knows? The, the fabric's so pretty, though. I shouldn't do that. 
I should use what I have. So, next. Oh gosh. Okay, so next, you know, when I was watching Floss Tube, I would see this chart come up time and time and time and time again. And it's Consider the Lilies from Heartstring Samplery. It is huge. It is 435 by 363. Definitely the biggest project that I have going and one of the smallest starts, of course, but it's so pretty. Um, I am doing this one on, I believe it's ballet slippers. I'm pretty sure I don't have it written down for some reason. Ballet slippers from, I think it's Fox and Rabbit. Don't quote me on that. Um, this is a needle miner, not part of the project. <laughs> so let's see. I think this is the top corner. It's so, this is like the top left corner. So I just have a part of a flower, some vines, but yeah, the fabric is gorgeous. It's a pinky, peachy fabric. You can kind of, it's kind of coming across, but I love this needle minder. I believe I got that from Abby Topknot as well. Love her stuff. Love her shop. Um, I'm using the call for colors, the um, threads, and that is 40 count, that fabric. So hopefully it won't be like so huge, but it'll still probably be pretty big. Next, we've got Santa's Trip, another really piddly start. I don't have a picture of this one. Um, I have a PDF, so um, I will insert a picture here. This I saw this on so many people's um, floss tubes as well, and it is so cute, so, so cute. And I have, oh my gosh, this is horrible. So this is 40 count Misty Rain Linen from Lakeside Linens. I don't know how I snagged that. It looks white right now, but it's blue. Uh, it's like an icy blue color. I'm gonna have to figure out how I can get that to come across. It looks extremely white right now, but it's blue. I hope my lighting is okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Just gonna let you guys know. No idea, but I'm giving it a go. Uh, so yeah, that is, and I haven't been telling you guys when I've been starting these, these are all the last four are 1231 of 21. So last year for, for New Year's Eve. Um, in fact, the next six are from that time. The next one that I have for you, I actually have progress on. So I'm really, really happy about that. Um, it is Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. It is so beautiful. I've seen this also a million times on Instagram. And I just, I love it. I'm saying that about everything. When I watch this back, I'm probably going to be like, oh my gosh, Caitlin. Yeah. Carriage House Samplings Autumn at Hawk Run Hollow. And I have two blocks of this one done. So I'm doing this on a 40 count mallow linen. And I am, I started at the bottom. And look how cute. So I have the bottom two, which books on Thanksgiving. So there's a turkey, turkey tom. Um, actually, the coverage looks pretty good. In person, it's a little, you can kind of see the background fabric, but from here it looks great. So I'm just gonna go with that. And then I finished this next one about Thanksgiving, um, like a couple days before Thanksgiving this year. So that was fun. Fun to get done and I love this one so this will be vertical these so yeah I have a very a very tall piece and I look forward to continuing on with this one I don't know if I'm going to stitch I'll just show you quick I don't know if I'm going to stitch um the Halloween blocks with this piece um so we've got the witch and then like a ghost in a graveyard, so cute. I would love to do those maybe as smalls, but I really wanna be able to like keep this up from September to November <laughs> whenever I finish it. So I'm wondering if I take the Halloween stuff out. I don't know though, it's cute. I'll make up my mind. Well, I have to do it soon because those are my next ones to do. So 
that is Autumn at Hawker and Hollow. The next one I have for you is also a New Year's new start for 2021. And it is the blue flower, the gentle rain. Look how cute. So there's a girl with red hair and a brown dog. And of course I'm gonna change it so that girl has brown hair and my dog is chocolate brown. Um, so I'll be changing that to look like little birdie. Um, but I love like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm like blowing this out, but like the raccoon, there's a raccoon and a duck and just, it's so cute. I'm doing this on the called for fabric which is bittersweet linen from Lakeside. And I just have an urn. <laughs> I've got an urn done. This is a pinky fabric as well. That is a theme for me. So there is the urn. I'm doing that with the called for threads. I'll be better in the future about showing my threads. Today I'm just all over the place. They're really, it's a mix of DMC and I think, is it Weeks? No, Classic Color Works. So my next project, I first saw on Shiloh's channel, uh, X Stitch MD. I love Shiloh. She has amazing projects and her knitting, just all the shawls. I'm so impressed and I wish I could knit. Um, but I saw this pattern on her plus two or Instagram maybe even um, a couple years ago and it is from Bright Needle. It's called the Sunshine and Shadows Sampler. I don't know how good of a view you're getting of this but it's like different shades of gold and on the top super light on the bottom it's a little darker and so cute. Um, just an alphabet. I know I said before I don't do alphabets but I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> All I have done is one side. I did not iron this one. One side of the border. So that's one. Um, I've got three more to go, obviously. And the middle. I think you guys know how uh, how patterns work. So I'm glad I just explained that for you all. <laughs> I'll get better at this, I promise. All right, we're back. My video stopped and I freaked out. I thought I lost all my stuff, but I didn't. So, well, it recorded. Now I'm doing a new one. I'll have to figure out how to put them together. I don't know editing. It should be an interesting process. Uh, my next project, which is number 12, is Cinnamon Stars by Plum Street Samplers. So cute with the pumpkins. Nice little fall scene with all the colors. I'm doing this on 28 counts. Um, presenting Lorelei Gilmore, which came in the Ottoman Stars Hollow box from Black Needle Society. And I've got a nice little start on this one. I've got the house done. So there is the house. I love the stone. Um, the white outline of the stone is definitely blending in to my fabric. So I'm going to for sure um, backstitch that to just make it pop a little bit more. And I've got a few pumpkins. Love the variegation in this one too. So yeah, there's Cinnamon Stars. Whip number 14. Dreaming of Mums from Rosewood Manor. This is such a pretty piece. Oh my gosh, look at all of that. Um, yeah, it looks great. The golds, the pinks, the oranges, so good. Uh, this is also huge. It is... It's very large. I guess it's not that large. I don't know. It's 218 by 218. Still big. Um, I have, once again, a very small start. This is on 32 count lamb's wool, Jobelin. It's kind of plasticky, um, but it's a pretty color. I feel like I'm getting lines or something. But I just have uh, the smallest little starts. This little flower right here. It's super pretty good pinky colors. That is Rosewood Manor. Dreaming of Mums. I also have, um, in the same bag, I have dream, Dreaming of Tulips, um, which is also beautiful. I love those purples. 
That'll be good for a spring start one day. So, up next, we have flower box from Thistles. Um, this is also a 12 by 12 from last year. Um, it's just a really pretty flowers in a vase. Gotta love flowers in a vase. Um, I think most of my most of my projects have flowers in them, but just you know, you can't beat the colors, composition. Um, this is stitched on 32 count ancients, and that's a called for fabric. Um, this is what mine looks like. It doesn't really look like the picture to me. Um, the picture seems to be a lot more gray uh, tones with those blue flecks. And I see the blue in this, you know, they're on there, but this is like super brown. So um, this is my start, just the top of the flower. So many good colors in this one. Um, I'm using the call for colors and I believe they're mostly gentle arts. Um, with some DM DMCs in there. So that is flower box. All right, number 15 is fall pumpkin. Um, this is, I will put a picture up because I got this as a PDF from Etsy. Um, and the shop that I got it from is called Craft Cottage Loft. Craft Cottage Loft. I don't believe that they are um, a shop anymore. So this is just, it's a, just a big pumpkin. It's super cute. I'm going to stitch this one on this beautiful, uh, fabric. This is a 40 count from Color and Cotton called Crunchy Leaves. It's just pretty like rusty brownish orangey color. Good for fall. And then I'm going to do, here's my pitiful start, like two rows. Um, but I'll do it in this pale ochre also from color and cotton i think that's gonna look really great together so this is gonna be likely a long-term project so that is full pumpkin are you getting sick of my teeny tiny starts yet um up next uh this summer i decided to get up my first mirabilia um I've never done any type of stitching like this with the beads and, um, you know, crinic flosses and all of that goodness. So I've never done that before. Um, and I just think she is so pretty. She is called Botanical Garden um, from Mirabilia. And so I got the bead pack. Oh, I've been looking for this hoop. Yay. Um, I'm going to put that aside. I've been looking for that. Uh, so, and this is on... What kind of fabric? 32 count, touch of pink from Witchelt. Ooh, it's looking a little better right there. Um, and I know Witchelt fabric, I've, I've stitched on it before. It's very stiff. It feels plasticky and I don't know, like you can hear it. It's not soft. <laughs> um, I have, oh my gosh, how many stitches? 30 stitches maybe? Not even, not even, 20. It's just... Oh my god, Caitlin, what are you doing? I think I just like wanted to kit it up and I wanted a start and so I put in 10 stitches and called it good. Um, here's the bead pack that I got. can't remember where I got this. I don't know. Actually, I think I got it from Abby Topknot again. Now that I'm thinking about it, I think she had that um, in her shop. Next... We have, oh my gosh, I love this one so much. So this is Things of Autumn. I'm gonna put a picture right here. This is also a part of a series. I've done two. So far I've done spring and summer. And um, this is autumn. And I just started this, let's see. I started this, oh, so we're done with my 12 by 12 starts. This is good to know. Botanical Gardens, that previous one I started in June. And then this one I started in September of 2022, so this year. And I got just the little, the little boots. How cute are they? Oh my goodness. And I just love these. Um, I've had the spring one hanging up 
since last spring when I finished it. I never actually ended up finishing the summer, like FF only the summer one. Um, so I kept the spring up all year until I put my Christmas stuff up. And I just, I think they're so cute. Um, and they're super quick. Like if I spent a weekend on that, I would probably be pretty close to done. So that is um, one that I feel like I can get done relatively soon. All right, number 17. I'm so excited to show you this one. Um, this was my unicorn charts and I scoured the stash unloading Etsy, not Etsy, um, eBay. And I finally had good luck on eBay. Um, but my unicorn chart is Dollhouse from Bright Needle. I know this is an out of print and very coveted, it seems like, um, pattern. So I think I was in a bidding war. <laughs> I didn't pay like tons and tons. I think it was like in the $70. Oh, that's a lot. It was like $70. I paid probably too much, um, but I really, really wanted it. I've had my eye on it like forever. So I needed, I needed Dollhouse. Um, I saw this as well on Shiloh, Crossage MD on her channel a long time ago. And it used to be hanging like in her background and whenever I would watch her videos, oh, I just, I loved them or I loved the pattern. So I'm excited to have my hands on it. So I started this one. Oh, this is my birthday start this year. So I started this in November um, and I am doing a conversion. I know earlier I said I don't typically do conversions because I'm not confident in that yet, but I, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to say dated because I think it's classic. Um, but the colors don't speak to me. I just love the pattern so much. Um, so I thought I would try something a little different. I don't know why I'm trying something different on this classic, beautiful doll, you know, unicorn piece for me, but why not? I actually took the color palette, I think excluding these, I took the color palette from, oh, I want to say it's called the Dutch Sampler. I'll put a picture of the Dutch Sampler here um, so you can see what I mean. It's so pretty. And actually, I saw um, Samantha, the Hugo Stitcher, um, when she had kitted it up because I know she started that. It's so beautiful. But I, when I saw her colors, I was like, oh my gosh, the colors are so beautiful. And I just think, gosh, they're pretty. And then I added in some neutrals. Um, and I think I'm going to be able to get a really cool effect in my dollhouse. Um, so we'll see. I'm going to take it, you know, room by room. But on my birthday weekend, I think I did this in a weekend, I got the whole outline done. So here is the dollhouse. Let's try to get the whole thing in there. So I've got, you know, the brick. It was fun to stitch. There it is. There's 12 rooms. Um, I am stitching this on 36 count fiber on a whim cream and sugar. I love, love this fabric. Uh, I am using it for another pattern to come. Um, but yes, this is gorgeous. So, so like I was saying, there's 12 rooms, there's 12 months in the year. So I'm wondering if I can maybe focus on one room a month. I think that's super doable. Um, it's not like tons of stitching, uh, but I just feel like, let's break it up a little bit, right? Extend the fun for my unicorn chart. So I'm excited to see how that one progresses. Um, we're getting to the end. I've got two more to show you. This one is, I started on um, November 23rd. So I think I was on Thanksgiving break. Oh my God. And again, I have like 20 stitches. I'm going to put a picture. This is Marion Minty from um, With a Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. It was a free pattern. I think you can still get it for free. I think the, yeah, you can, you can. Uh, I believe it was on her Facebook group. I, I found it somewhere else though online. Um, so I'm stitching this on a color in cotton. Um, it's a, like a mystery. I don't know if I have a color for you. They do color and cotton sometimes when they have extra fabric or like different cuts. They send out like um, like a grab bag style ornament pack. So they're just little, little cuts. 
But this, again, this pinky fabric, I am just in love with. So um, I'm gonna start this. Here's the, the beginnings of a reindeer. So we've got Rudolph and then Santa to come and a Christmas tree. So I was planning on actually doing this before Christmas. And then the Modern Folk Embroidery Ever Totes Roxy Floss Co combination advent style um, holiday sale came out and I was enamored. So I did get that finished. So I will show that to you in my finished video. Um, but that took up a lot of my time. You know, the holidays are, are crazy. So um, I didn't have much time for other types of stitching besides that. And it was so fun. So um, yeah, okay. My very last, yeah, my very last whip, number 20 is, I'm sure, well, I don't know if you can guess, but I think I've put it out there into the universe. Um, I'm gonna put a picture. So I am going to join in all of the people that are going to stitch the Beatrix Potter Quaker Sampler. Um, I believe Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, kind of brought this uh, charts uh, and sampler kind of back into the conversation. Uh, I believe she had gone and seen the original when she was on her trip overseas and decided to get it. It is, um, who does this? Strictly Stitchy does, um, has charted this sampler. So this is, they don't know a lot about it, I guess. And I should do my homework because all I know is it was hanging in Beatrix Potter's home. And so she didn't actually stitch it, but anyway, it's beautiful. Here it is again, if I haven't already put it up. Um, but I, this was my, uh, yesterday on New Year's Day, I just did a little side motif and got my first kind of half Quaker medallion done. And it's looking gorgeous already. This is a 40 count on Again, fiber on a whim, cream and sugar. And this is a monochromatic sampler. So I, again, went back to my trusty color in cotton. And I, the color I chose is Cypress Mulch. And it is beautiful. It's like this mauve brown, almost looks kind of purpley. Um, but it's, it's so pretty. And I think it looks great on this fabric. So there's my starts. And yeah, those are my whips. So that's 20 whips. Again, way more whips than I'm comfortable with. The 12 by 12 New Year's um, thing last year just put me over the edge and I never caught up. Uh, although I did this New Year's Eve, I, I was getting jealous seeing everybody doing all of their um, projects and I should have, I wish I could have um, participated. I had to be social though and go hang out with my lovely friends, but I was missing everyone when I was looking on Instagram. So, um, next year, next year I'll be into that. So those are my whips. Thanks for sticking around. I feel like this is maybe a little bit long for a first video, but, um, those are my 20 whips. I think, um, I'm just really excited to have this floss tube and, um, get started here. So we'll see how the editing process goes. God knows. It'll be a miracle if this video gets uploaded. Um, but I just wanted to close by thanking some people that have like kind of inspired me to start my own floss tube channel because like I said, I've been watching floss tube. I mean, it's like my favorite show. <laughs> so, um, I've mentioned a few people, Shiloh, um, Elizabeth Ann can stitch, um, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World. I love watching your channels. They're so wonderful. You guys are very established in the community, I know. Um, but I, I have so many people that I follow. I've really been enjoying. I just saw a couple, I think over the last month, there have been a couple of new floss tubers that have kind of been my inspiration. I was like, oh, they're doing it. I should start too. Um, Cameron from Cam the Stitcher. Love, love, love your channel and all your projects. I just saw your whip parade and it was great. You have a lot. Um, and then who did I just watch? Oh, Marjorie, I have my notes. Marjorie made stitches. Um, she is also wonderful. So those are some newer floss tubers that I've just kind of gotten some inspiration from. Uh, 
let's see, Bridgen, the museum stitcher, Megan, the Seattle stitcher. You guys are so fun to watch. I got cut off again. I, I don't know what's going on. I was talking about all of the floss tubers that I watch. I was naming some names. There's so many people. So in future videos, I will be sure to um, highlight a few people that I'm watching because um, I get a lot of inspiration from from this community. Um, I'm saying um a lot. That's okay. First video, thanks for the grace. I'm sure I made many mistakes. I'm sure I didn't say all the fabrics and the, all the things that I'm supposed to do, but I appreciate you giving me any advice, any other people um, that have done a floss tube or that just watch a lot of floss tube. If you have advice for me, please make it constructive and not mean. <laughs> I'm nervous about that. Um, I guess that comes with the territory of putting yourself out there though, right? But thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, here's my Instagram again. If you want to come see what I'm doing, I post more. Well, obviously, I post, post more there because I haven't done a plus tube yet. Oi. Uh, so yeah, come along, see what I'm stitching, and please comment down below if you have any questions if i didn't say something that you want to know um, i'll also list my projects below in the description box um, i'll put my email on there too but yeah comments and um, let's start a dialogue i'm super excited for the community building piece of of this so um, i'll be coming back to you i'm gonna do a finish parade and then i'll just kind of start out with um, my plans and how I'm going to be doing these videos from now on. I think I'm going to try to do like once a month, um, kind of a monthly wrap up type situation after I do my finished parade. So really fun doing this. Um, I'm going to go try to edit this now. That should be so fun. All right, everyone have a really good day and thanks so much for tuning in. Take care.